I'm Marjorie Kennedy, and I'm back with my second original play, Calaboo, A Jack's Folktale. This show is about a young boy named Winston who travels from New York City to Tobago, West Indies, to visit his grandmother. He ends up meeting a series of folklore characters, La Jablesse, Papa Bois, the Sukuya, Dwent, the Lagahu, and Mama Jalo. Trinidad and Tobago is a very unique island. There were so many cultures that were mixing at one time that created new stories and new beliefs. Sukuya will fly, suck you till you're dry. Dwen's a walk, not a bless at all, but mama boy is the boss. Just at night I see the big fire wall of fire coming over the hill. I told you what to say that. My parents would say that that's Sukuya. She was a Sukuya, to see. And they would change their skin and suck people's blood. You want at something like a dog, like the Lagahu? Look like that. Look, look, you tell well, he freezes and he stand up then he, well, then he took off. Dwens are kids who were born but were never christened or baptized and die. And when you go running into the bushes to help them, uh, you're never found again. Cannot explain what they see and they attribute it to all these wonderful things like Sapuniella, Jabless, and Dwens. I remember my mom telling me some of these stories and as I started to do more research, it started to come to life. So I started writing the music for Folklore in about 2007. I had already written one piece about Elijah Bless and I decided to expand that to a suite. I went to a concert by Etienne Charles and he performed a song called Dwen and it immediately captured me and I saw a story to his music. And once I listen to Etienne's music, it, it really just brings each of these characters to life. It really kind of is the breath of the, of the play. It has been a really interesting exploration to figure out how these characters would live physically in the body and on stage where there's a mixture of history and theater and jazz music and dance living. I'm excited to use movement and dance again um, to create these characters. My character as grandmother is more of the griot. She's more of the woman who knows all, sees all, and lives. It's great to really have the playwright in the room with you so that it really is a collaborative process. You know, I know quite a bit about our awful course, so um, that was an inspiration. We traveled to Trinidad and Tobago to shoot footage of the actual landscape so the audience actually feels like they're in the space through the images. We were looking more at shooting silhouettes instead of actual faces and images with detail. And also when you leave that up to the audience's imagination, it just makes things a little bit more mystical. But using this, we're able to bring audience who, audiences who like jazz, audiences who like dance, and audiences who like film. Anytime I hear music, I'm thinking about somebody dancing. And so I'm definitely looking forward to this. I think it's really important to preserve these stories because it links so many people from so many generations. There was so much that was lost in the Atlantic with the Middle Passage and the slavery that these stories are of very few pieces of what we have to connect us. There's always some truth hidden deep inside these stories. We seem to be losing a lot of it among the, the younger generation. I remember stories from my great-grandmother, and she told my grandmother, and she told my mother, and my mother told me. It inspired me to interview my own family and relatives that believed in this oral tradition. And so people with pride, and still also those of the Caribbean diaspora with pride in themselves, and also share the stories of the Caribbean to everyone else around them. Take us out of our regular world and put us into a whole new realm 
that, that tickles the imagination. I'm hoping that this show is an example to the world to show how Caribbean storytelling, to show how and why Caribbean storytelling is important.